Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and in this video we will go through the netting access policy. So in the last video we did talk about uh, the access policy and the video previous to that we did talk about uh, the gateways and servers and uh, there will be links in the description below. But uh, let's start with the net. Same as the policy, the net will go from top to bottom and first hit is the one that counts. Netting will more or less be effect, um, in effect as soon as the traffic is passing the firewall. So it doesn't matter if the interface is external or internal. You, you can expect NAT to happen within the firewalls. And this is something that you can, you can set in the settings, so it's not 100%. When it comes to checkpoint, yes, do your manual net rules and your automatic net rules so you have complete control over them. When it comes to checkpoint, netting can be done in different ways. So let me show you. If we do a new, new net rule here, just add below. And we add, let's do a new object. So we do a new host. So we do server host uh, 25 and we do an IP of 10, 10, 10, dot 10. And this is just my uh, strange way of doing uh, host objects. You can do it in a different way. You see here that you can do NAT. A very common way is to do hide net. Maybe you wouldn't do that on a host object, you would do that on a network object. So if you're not aware of this, but the host object is if it's one server or one uh, client, and the network object is if it's a complete subnetwork. So for a host object, normally you would either do a manual, I will show you that as well, um, or you would do an automatic NAT. And if you do an automatic NAT on a specific host, I would say the most common is to do a static, meaning that you do a one-to-one -one NAT on this specific server. And you can select which gateways is installed on, etc. And this is something that you need to, to keep in mind because if you have multiple gateways within your organization and some are only for internal parts, maybe you don't want to have a NAT rule within your internal network, but only on your external gateway to the, in to the internet. But uh, I will make it easy and just do it on all. And uh, let's press OK. This will add an automatic general, general rule. And you see here how it's built up this, uh, this rule. So it has the source of the server, destination any, and it will do a translation. And you don't see the translation here because this is an automatic rule. So you need to click into the object and then press NAT to see the IP. So you cannot see it by hovering. It will not uh, show you anything. So you need to click it if you have an automatic rule. If you on the other hand would do, I'd remove this, and if we do a manual NAT rule, so to say. So we add uh, a new host, uh, host, 26 and this will be 11 and then I don't put the net here I just do OK I will do one more rule below so if I right click and press below and I will do one more object as if some if any comes to my external external IP 
So I will do a, a new object, net, and um, host 26, 80, 80, 80, 81. Uh, by the way, this is just fake IP addresses. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to hack it. So in this case, we have the original source, this IP, to any destination. It will keep the original for both. So that's incorrect. So we need to do as the automatic rule. But we will use this NAT object and place it here. So this means when traffic comes from this IP address to any destination, it will static net itself behind this IP address and it will keep the destination as original. And we want the traffic to be able to go both ways because this is a static net and not the hide net. And I can change this by right clicking and change net method but we do a static net in this case so when any source comes to my destination the external ip i want it to be translated which destination it should reach so in this case i want to reach this destination so to make uh, a NAT rule within checkpoint, depending on which type of NAT rule you want, either it's cr created by automatic or you need to make multiple rules with multiple objects. I like to do mine with manual. There are some disadvantages of it when it comes to proxy ARP uh, because proxy ARP is per automatic when it's an automated NAT rule and uh, if you do a um, manual NAT rule it's not per automatic but you can bypass that by using uh, link networks to your routers I would say that's the preferred way instead of doing a, a big uh, slash whatever network to your external service provider you do a link network and then you route in your address then you don't need to, to do this proxy ARP things. There is specific files that you can change in the gateway to, to resolve this anyway. Build in the correct way. And the correct way, when it comes to service provider uh, thinking, you should use link networks. So we have talked about the automatic net where checkpoints add these two rules. And this is based on the net column here and we did do a static one and we did do a manual net rule here as well and the last one you can do is um, a hide net and you can either do that automatic or you can do it in manual so let's do it like this so we do a new network object so net 10.10.10 .10 .10 and you need to add the subnetwork. I don't think you can write slash, it would be nice, but um, currently it's subnetwork. And here you can do NAT as well. So NAT is on, not only for specific host objects, it can be used for network objects as well. And here you can do automatic NAT and you can do hide network, either behind the gateway meaning this if depending on your topology this can be different ip addresses um, and you can select this by selecting which gateway you want to install it on but uh, behind gateway is fairly common uh, there is benefits if doing it behind a specific ip so your web surfing isn't using the, the IP address of the gateway itself. Um, that's regarding blacklisting and so on, so you don't lose your complete connectivity. And maybe you have different networks that you want to hide between behind different IP addresses. For example, if you have a guest network, 
maybe you want to hide that network behind a different address than your um, normal client network or like uh, servers if you have test and stage and production you want to hide them behind different IP addresses and um, here you can do that uh, if so you would hide behind a, a, an IP address um, if you put in IPv6 here well then you need to have IPv6 here as well but let's do it this way just to, to show it so this way it will hide the, the traffic so you see it will fill up this different topics depending on what you're doing and did you notice here traffic between itself it will not net traffic from this one to any will hide meaning if you have multiple interfaces on your checkpoint uh, meaning that the traffic wants to go between local interfaces on the checkpoint internal interfaces like uh, if we add the network net 10 20 10 uh, 0 slash 24 And we do the same on this, we hide it behind the gateway. So what happens now if traffic want to pass from this 10 network to that 10 network? Well, if the destination is 1020, it catch any and will be hide netted behind the gateway so to not screw up your network you need to do a manual net above all this meaning you need to put the net rule somewhere here to say from the 10 network to the 10 20 network it should keep its original source and original destination and you want this both ways so you want to drag and drop between the, the difference so when the 1020 network sent to the 1010 network it also keeps its original source and destination if you don't do this well then the gate will will net the traffic and you will have most likely a production outage I would recommend you to do a group so you don't need to do this for every single interface you do a group so network new network group group local nets and then you add the two networks that you have in this gateway press ok and instead of having these two rules we delete this one we delete the, the destination and source and we put the, the local groups to local the local networks to local networks meaning we have one rule saying here don't net traffic that is local nets to local nets of course you need to remember to to um, add the networks if you add interfaces to your gateway and yes to show something yes it's possible to net this but you cannot do an automatic net so if you want to hide net all this you need to do a manual rule saying local networks to any And then you need to put your your IP address here, meaning you can have like uh, 
uh, nat uh, 80, 80, 80, 82. And then you need to make sure to change this to hide nat. So this way you can hide the local networks behind one single IP and you're only using one row to fix it. And as I mentioned in the previous video, nothing of this is activated or even visible for other administrators until you have published the changes. So we will publish the change. When I have published the change, it will be visible for other administrators and it's possible to push it to the gateways. And if you do changes like this, I would recommend you to do a verify. So you check the policy itself, you take the corporate policy and verify it. That means that the checkpoint will check the policy to see if you contradict yourself with some of the rules. Meaning if you put rules that um, deny something that is later approved, they will say this rule cannot be to be pushed out because uh, two, two rules are hiding each other. That will be the topic for the next video. So this was it for, for the netting part. Of course we can do this more advanced, but this is a good start. So I hope you did learn something and I see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.